of Longbourn. Again, chapter 6. The ladies of Longbourn soon waited on those of Netherfield. The visit was returned in due form. Miss Bennet's pleasing manners grew on the goodwill of Mrs. Hurst and Miss Bingley, and though the mother was found to be intolerable, and the younger sisters not worth speaking to, a wish of being better acquainted with them was expressed towards the two eldest. By Jane, this attention was received with the greatest pleasure, but Elizabeth still saw superciliousness in their treatment of everybody, everybody hardly excepting even her sister, and could not like them, though their kindness to Jane, such as it was, had a, a, a value as arising in all probability from the influence of their brother's admiration. It was generally evident, whenever they met, that he did admire her, and to her it was equally evident that Jane was yielding to the preference which she had begun to entertain from for him from the first and was in a way to be very much in love but she considered with pleasure that it was not likely to be discovered by the world in general since Jane united with great strength of feeling a composure of temper and a uniform cheerfulness of manner which would guard her from the suspicions of the impertinent, 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 impertinent. She mentioned this to her friend Miss Lucas. It may be perhaps, it may perhaps be pleasant, replied Charlotte, to be able to impose on the public in such a case, but it is sometimes a disadvantage to be so very guarded if a woman conceals her affection with the same skill from the object of it. She may lose the opportunity of fixing him, and it will then be but poor consolation to believe the world equally in the dark. There is so much of gratitude or vanity in almost every attachment that it is not safe to leave any to itself. We can all begin freely. A slight preference is natural enough, but there are very few of us who have hard enough to be really in love without encouragement. In nine cases out of ten, a woman had better show more affection, affection than she feels. My, the text. Bingley likes your sister undoubtedly, but he may never do more than like her if she does not help him on but she does help him on as much as her nature will allow. If I can perceive her regard for him, he must be a simpleton indeed, not to discover it too. Remember, Eliza, that he does not know Jane's disposition as you do. But if a woman is partial to a man and does not endeavor to conceal it, he must find it out. Perhaps he must if he sees enough of her, but though Bingley and Jane meet tolerably often, it is never for many hours together, and as they always see each other in large mixed parties, it is impossible that every moment should be employed in conversing together. Jane should therefore make the most of every half hour in which she can command his attention. When she is secure of him, there will be leisure for falling in love as much as she chooses. Your happiness certainly, sir, and has the advantage also of being in vogue amongst the less polished of the societies of the world. Every savage can dance. Sir William only smiled. Your friend performs delightfully. He continued after a pause on seeing Bingley join the group. And I doubt not that you are an adept in the science yourself, Mr. Darcy. You saw me dance at Meryton, I believe, sir. Yes, indeed, and received no inconsiderable pleasure from the sight. 
you often dance at St. James's? Never, sir. Do you not think it would be a proper compliment to the place? It is a compliment which I never pay to any place. If I can avoid it, you have a house in town, I conclude. Mr. Darcy bowed. I had once some thoughts of fixing in town myself, for I am fond of superior society, but I did not feel quite certain that the air of London would agree with Lady Lucas. He paused in hopes of an answer, but his companion was not disposed to make any, and Elizabeth, at that instant moving towards them, he was struck with the notion of doing a very gallant, gallant thing and called out to her, My dear Miss Eliza, why are you not dancing? Mr. Darcy, you must allow me to present this young lady to you as a very desirable partner. You cannot refuse to dance, I am sure, when so much beauty is before you. And, taking her hand, he would have given it to Mr. Darcy, who, though extremely surprised, was not unwilling to receive it. When she instantly drew back and said with some discomposure to Sir William, Indeed, sir, I have not the least intention of dancing. I entreat you not to suppose that I moved this way in order to beg for a partner. Mr. Darcy, with grave propriety, requested to be allowed the honor of her hand, but in vain. Elizabeth was determined, nor did Sir William at all shake her purpose by his attempt at persuasion. You excel so much in the dance, Miss Eliza, that it is cruel to deny me the happiness of seeing you, and though this gentleman dislikes the amusement in general, he can have no objection, I am sure, to oblige us for one half hour. Mr. Darcy is all politeness, said Elizabeth, smiling. <laughs> he is indeed, but considering the inducement, my dear Miss Eliza, cannot wonder at his complacence, or have you say that, for who would object to such a partner? Elizabeth looked archly and turned away. Her resistance had not injured her with the gentleman, and he was thinking of her with some complacency, when thus accosted by Miss Bingley, I can guess the subject of your reverie. I should imagine not. You are considering how insupportable it would be to pass many evenings in this manner, in such society. And indeed, I am quite of your opinion. I was never more annoyed. The insipidity, insipidity, insipidity. <laughs> and yet the noise, the nothingness, and yet the self-importance of all these people. What would I give to hear your strictures on them. Your conjecture is totally wrong, I assure you. My mind was more agreeably engaged. I have been mediating on the meditating, not mediating, meditating, sorry, on the very great pleasure which a pair of fine eyes in the face of a pretty woman can bestow. Miss Bingley immediately fixed her eyes on his face. In desire, he would tell her what lady had the credit of inspiring such reflections. Mr. Darcy replied with great intrepidity. Miss Elizabeth Bennet. Miss Elizabeth Bennet, replied Miss Bingley. I am all astonishment. How long has she been such a favorite? And pray, when am I to wish you joy? That is exactly the question which I expected you to ask. A lady's imagination is very rapid. It jumps from admiration to love, from love to matrimony, in a moment. I knew you would be wishing me joy. Nay, if you are so serious about it, I shall consider the matter as absolutely settled. You will have a charming mother-in-law indeed, and of course, she will always be at Pemberley with you. He listened 